Now, where are we today? I mean, let's see if we can figure that out for a few minutes. Um, I'd say that um, both views are still out there, as they always will be, irrepressible conflict and blundering generation, if you want to call them that. Um, historians lately have been emphasizing more the long history of the slavery. When, did this, when, when do you start thinking about the causes of the Civil War? Um, we have a tendency to push things backward. The word long, the adjective long, has become de rigueur now in studying almost anything. There's the long civil rights movement. There's the long reconstruction, we will see. Historians don't know how to count, is the problem. There's the long 19th century. Historians now think the 19th century went from the French Revolution to World War I, like 125 years. Um, but so how far do you go back? Some people go back to the Constitution itself. Some people go back to the Missouri Compromise. Um, we like to go back as far as we can. A, a recent article on this by a historian says, Hope, this is a quote, hopefully we will never read an article called Christopher Columbus and the Coming of the American Civil War. <laughs> Fair enough. However, in my role as a school marm, let me point out to this tenured writer that he is misusing the English language because hope, and listen up folks, hopefully does not mean I hope. It is probably the most misused word in the English language. Hopefully it will not snow anymore. No, forget it, that's not English. I don't know what language you're speaking. You mean I hope. Hopefully means full of hope. Federer entered his match with Nadal, hopefully. He hoped he would win. That's different. If I say hopefully Federer will win, that's wrong. I mean to say I hope. So watch out on your papers for that. That's the one of, I'll give you the other one while we're at it, the other giant mistake. By the way, you can find these errors in the New York Times every day, so I am retrograde on this, old school, I admit it. Impact is not a verb. No, you can't say it impacted, this impacted. No, it had an impact on or affected. Impact is a noun. I know this is a lost cause, just like the old Confederacy, but <laughs> I am fighting that battle. John Ashworth, I'm, to end that digression, John Ashworth, the, uh, whose book is on our reading list next week and the week after, uh, introduces another element into this story, which had been previously pretty neglected, not by everybody, which is slave resistance itself as a factor in helping to bring about the Civil War. Um, slave resistance, particularly slaves running away, which we will talk about, fugitive slaves. Um, it didn't produce war directly, but it generated southern reactions that convinced Northerners that abolitionist talk about the slave power was real. It produced national laws which trampled on the liberties of blacks and whites. Um, in other words, the struggle between masters and slaves reverberated in forcing the white South into undemocratic policies which then increasingly alarmed the North. Finally, most recently, and then we'll end in a minute, there's a new revisionism. As I said, obviously, war has an effect on how, any war in our own time has an effect on how historians think about the Civil War. The, I think we're now in the midst of a post-Iraq revisionism. Most academics were critics of the Iraq War, no question about that. Most saw it as a pointless war, a needless war, a war brought about by blundering politicians a war clothed in the language of freedom, but completely crass in every way, et cetera, reprehensible, et cetera, et cetera. War is nothing but pointless slaughter. There's now been a whole spate of books which have viewed the Civil War through that language, whether it's Drew Faust's book, The Republic of Death, The Only Reality of the War is Death, uh, that um, soldiers were not fighting for any real higher purpose, although Faust coyly, in parentheses, exempts the black soldiers from this. It's hard to say black soldiers were not fighting for anything. All there is is death, and forget about any high, you know, high moral language. Um, and other books, da America Aflame by David Goldfield, he starts out saying this is an anti-war book. 
anti-war in general, and again, it's the blundering generation that brought us into the war, or Harry Stout, a great professor at Yale, uh, on religion and the Civil War. He now blames the ministers for whipping up a kind of evangelical fervor, both sides against the other, uh, which helped make people go into war, a kind of moral rhetoric to cover up needless uh, slaughter. Um, A recent book of essays with the unusual title, Weirding the Civil War, Weirding, denies that the war had any coherence or purpose whatsoever, either for soldiers or for political leaders. So this new revisionism is valuable in some ways as a a kind of a rebuke to easy uh, self-congratulation. Given that no one is going to defend slavery nowadays, uh, it's easy enough for the northern writers or those who sympathize with you to say, oh, look, uh, the good north and the evil south. Uh, It's easy enough to say that. These books complicate that picture uh, considerably. But it's interesting that none of the historians I have mentioned are African Americans. Black historians have not bought into this pointless war argument, perhaps for reasons that are pretty easy to uh, understand. And none of these historians explains or puts forward a plausible scenario for how slavery might have ended in the absence of war. Nobody, I have never seen a plausible scenario for the peaceable end of slavery. So I think if you're going to say the war was unnecessary, you have to have an alternative scenario which would have led to abolition, and I haven't seen it, but maybe, maybe it's out there. We might learn something about all this from the great black scholar activist W.E.B. Du Bois, who in his book Black Reconstruction, published in the 1930s, of which we will speak later on, um, challenged the revisionists of the 30s by putting slavery at the center of the story. But Du Bois was anything but a warmonger. He wrote in that book, war is murder, force, anarchy, yet sometimes it produces good. And somehow we have to find a historical stance which can take into account both of those uh, things, that war is murder and yet it can produce good. And the end of slavery was certainly a monumental result for not only black people, but the entire nation. But the one thing I think we can be certain of is that as long as the issues mentioned by Potter, (laughs) right, union, slavery, death, are still debated, and as long as issues about race and nationhood and citizenship are points of debate in our own lives, and war itself, uh, historians will continue to disagree about the causes of the Civil War. So our task, starting next time, is to try to figure out what we think the the causes of the Civil War were.